Good morning and welcome to our service. We're so glad that you could join us this morning. We'd love for you to join us straight after this service where we'll be meeting on Zoom. We'll be catching up in our own churches and we'll also have special rooms for families and kids. If you're new to Zoom or new to our church, we'd love for you to join us as well and our tech team will be on hand to help you get online and to meet with new members of your church. Do follow the link below or click on the link in the comment section at the end of this video. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to our service this morning. Uh, we're all together this morning, young people, middle-aged people, old people, whatever bracket you might put yourself into or nothing. We're worshipping all together this morning. So there'll be bits of the service that you may need to use your younger bit of your brain to engage with. There'll be some bits of the service where you'll need to use some of your older bit of the brain to engage with. But we hope the whole service is something that speaks to your heart and enables you to worship Jesus and enables us to worship Jesus all together. And we're going to do that in song as we begin. And then after our first song, Sammy's going to lead us in an activity that introduces the theme of our service. So if you're able, let's stand and before we sing, let me pray. Father God, we thank you for your great love for us. And we pray that as we worship together online now, that you will speak to us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand to sing.
So I've got a little quiz this morning and it's all on the theme of grapes because that is where we're going this morning. We're thinking about Jesus being the true vine. I haven't got a picture of grapes but I thought I'd put my pineapple up. I hope you like it. My mum painted it. She's very clever. So which is the odd one out here? Phoenix, Queen of Esther, Muscat, Golden Delicious and Rembrandt which is the odd one out. Okay, question number two. When do you harvest grapes? Which season? When do you harvest grapes? Number three, true or false? Dried grapes become currants. Dried grapes become currants, true or false? Thirdly, I heard it through the grapevine was a hit for which soul singer? I heard it through the grapevine was a hit for which soul singer. And final um, question, which of these is a move in aerobics? The fig leaf, the bunch of grapes or the grapevine, which is a move in aerobics? OK, so question number one, what was the odd one out? Golden Delicious is an apple. The other four are all types of grape. Number two, you harvest grapes in the autumn. Number three, false. Dried grapes are raisins, not currants. Uh, next question. I heard it through the grapevine was a hit for Marvin Gaye. It was actually also a hit first for Gladys Knight and the Pip. So either of those answers are um, acceptable. And finally, a move in aerobics is called a grapevine, where you do a step behind, step together. Step behind, step step together. You can't see my feet, but that's what they're doing. So that introduces us to our theme of grapes and vines. And now we're going to sing Shine from the Inside Out. So get ready to do your best actions and let's sing this together and worship God. Hi everyone, this is Shine. Join in with the actions if you like. The vine and the branches. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. 
If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love, and if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be complete, and that your joy may be complete in you. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command, I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learnt from my father, and I have made known to you, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Good morning. I'm at the Harrow and Hope Vineyard up near the top of Marlow Bottom and Marlow. And uh, I wanted to bring you up here for a particular reason this morning, as you'll see, because we're thinking about the church being like a vine. So I thought, let's have a look at some vines locally. As you can see up here, it's lush, it's green. The vines are rigged up against their um, frameworks, their trellises, and they are growing abundantly. They are full of life and vigour. And if we can zoom in a little bit, you'll be able to see that the grapes are starting to form and uh, they'll be hanging in beautiful dark black and purple clusters um, very soon actually only another month I reckon before they start to be ripe and this just stretches on and on and it's a wonderful picture of life um, in all its luxuriant rampant fullness and that's a picture that we're thinking about this morning of the church vineyard um, in Marlow and we've seen what a lovely place it is and all those vines growing and full of bright green leaves and fruit the grapes just starting to develop and today we're thinking about church being like a vine Jesus says I am the true vine in John chapter 15 the reading we just heard and he says that but he says every single one of us if we're connected to him we are the branches so the church is like a vine and what does that mean for us and what can we learn from it today um, here in Marlow, Marlow Bottom, Little Marlow and Bissom? Well firstly that it's all about Jesus Jesus is the true vine. Jesus is the central stem and each one of us is just a leaf or a twig or a tendril or a little grape just growing off the vine. And we can only grow, we can only have that life in us if we're connected to Jesus. You can't be a Christian without Christ because then you're just Ian. And no offence Ian, but I don't want to be Ian. I want to be a Christian. And that means being connected with Christ in prayer, in worship, doing those things by myself, even if I can't meet up with others to do them. It means reading my Bible. It means living the life that Jesus lived, a life of joy and service and humility, all kinds of things. Being connected with Christ is the most important thing about being um, in the vine and it's the most important thing about being the church. We are the body of Christ we heard last week, we are branches in the true vine um, and that's where we find our identity. So it's all about Jesus. Secondly, there's going to be pruning. Now I don't know if you noticed that but Jesus talked um, quite a bit in that in those verses about um, his father God being the gardener and he prunes every branch that does not bear fruit but he also prunes the branches that do bear fruit to make them more more fruitful so that means that we if we're following Christ if we're connected with him we need to expect a certain amount of pruning and reshaping in our lives it might be that God wants to prune us of some bad habits that might be the dead wood you know there might be a particular relationship where we are always just trying to prove that we're right. Maybe God wants to prune that from us. It might be 
that we are often tempted to be a little bit economical with the truth. If we get in trouble, we might try and bend the truth, lie even a little bit just to get the trouble away from us. I think God might want to prune that bit of dead wood. It might be that we're just really frightened of telling people that we're a Christian at work or at school. And it might be that God says, you know, it's time that I pruned that and you, you need to be a little bit braver. So God prunes back the dead wood, but he also prunes the things that are fruitful um, because actually vines just grow at such a rate and with so much vigour that they kind of outgrow their own strength at some point. And so there are times when God cuts us back, even in things that are fruitful. You know, we might be looking and saying, God, why have you let all our churches be closed these last few months? And we're not sure how and when they're going to open and what will things look like when they do? And it can feel like a pruning. It feels uncomfortable and difficult and scary. Well, I don't know what it will look like in three months, three years, 300 years time. And I know that if we trust the gardener, it will be OK. And I know that if we're connected to Jesus, we will continue to grow even when we're pruned. So let's hold on to that in the things that we're finding difficult, whether it's challenges to us personally or whether it's the challenges we're facing together as churches, as a group of churches, a team that works together and cares for one another. Let's hold on to the fact that the pruning is in the hands of the master gardener. So Jesus is at the centre. There's going to be pruning. But ultimately, the pruning is going to lead to something good because the vine is only pruned in order to make it more fruitful. What is a vine for? Do you know you can't use the wood for anything? Um, you can burn it, but it doesn't even make a good fire. You can't use it for making furniture or building houses out of. It is, it is useless. You use a vine, you grow a vine in order to grow grapes. And then you can either enjoy and eat the grapes as they are, or you can juice them, or you can wait and you can ferment the juice. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of joy to be had from all of those different things that grapes are used for. You can dry them out and use them as raisins as well. Brilliant. Loads of uses for the fruit. The fruit is what is what the vine is there for. Jesus came to bring fruit into our lives. Jesus came to bring fruit into our lives and he went through the ultimate pruning. He was pruned even to the point of death so that we could have life and we could bear fruit. So what does it look like to live a fruity life as a church? Well, I wonder what our communities would notice if the church ceased to exist. I hope they would say, we really miss that place that is so welcoming. We really miss that refuge where anybody can go, no matter how broken, how messed up, no matter what age or gender or class they are. We really miss that safe space. We really miss hearing about Jesus and how much God loves us. We really miss the life of the spirit that flows through that church people praying for us, bringing healing, bringing new life. We really miss those people because they share what they have with anybody around them and they care for the poor. Are those the sorts of things that the people in our communities, our town and our villages, would they say that if our churches ceased to exist? I think they would, I hope they would. But there's the challenge, isn't it? That's the fruit. Now, it might be that people would say, oh, I miss the building or I miss the flower arrangers or I miss, you know, the inside and the beautiful art and the music. It might it might be that they say that. And I'm not saying that those things have no worth. But the fruit that Jesus wants to grow in us and Paul spells it out for us in Galatians chapter five is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness and self-control. Now, if you were doing yourself a top trump card and you had to score yourself on all of those things, I wonder what you would score. I wonder what somebody else would score you as well. So as we come to the end of this time and we think about the fruit that's growing in our church and in our own lives, let's just hold that standard up. And remember that God wants to grow that really, really good fruit in us 
because it's a blessing to others, it's a blessing to our communities and to our whole world. Let's pray. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Lord, grow your fruit in my life. Grow your fruit in the lives of our churches. Help us to trust you in the pruning and help us always to remain connected to you, Jesus Christ, because you are the true vine. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue in prayer now and use the theme of fruit to help us pray. With me, I have an apple. We're thinking about what does an apple need to grow? Well, the first thing it needs is light. Lord Jesus, we pray for anybody needing your light today. We pray for people seeking warmth, hope and love. Would you shine your light on them today? Lord, we know apples need water to grow. We pray for anyone in need of your life. We pray for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit. We pray for those needing physical water in countries where it's hard to find. Lord Jesus, would you have mercy? Please help them to find the clean and safe water that they need. Lord, as we've thought about in the sermon, we know we need connection to the tree in order to grow. Lord, we pray that you would help us to stay in our networks and our churches and our relationships that are beneficial and brilliant for us. Help us to find all the nutrients we need. Lord, we pray for anybody feeling isolated and alone. Would you connect them? Lord, we thank you that that's that promise in the Bible that you put the lonely into families. We pray that you would do that. And we know that to grow apples also need to stay on the tree and they need protection. Lord, we pray for safety. We pray for anybody in unsafe situations, whether that's related to the coronavirus or not feeling safe in their home or any other sense of threat. Lord, we ask for your protection for anybody feeling unsafe today. So we pray for light, for water, for connection to the tree and for protection. I've also got with me one, two, three, four, five grapes. I just want you to think about five people who you could pray for. It might be five people who don't know Jesus yet. It might be five people close to your heart. Maybe they're ill. Maybe they're struggling in some other way. But as we, I'm just going to hold them up. We're just going to pray. Just in the silence of our hearts or out loud. Lord, we thank you for these people. We pray that you would bless them now and meet them at their deepest point of need. And we close our prayer time together with the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So now we get to the bit of the service where we think about some things we could do that would help us to um, apply what we've thought about already for ourselves. And the first thing I want to suggest, these are all things that you could do later on today. So the first thing I want to suggest is that you come up to the vineyard and walk through it and simply enjoy the luxuriant foliage that you can see. See how many bunches of grapes you can spot and um, really take in this beautiful little corner of Marlow and just think about where is God working in your life, in the life of the church? Um, where is he pruning? Where is he bearing fruit? Um, what is he looking at when he sees you 
um, and he sees you as part of the vine and is your focus on Jesus, who is the true vine. So that's the first thing that you might want to do, um, either on your own or with some other people in your household. A second activity you might want to do to think more about this sermon is go and gather fruit. I'm going to suggest blackberries because they're what's ripest at the moment. And um, you might want to go and just pick some blackberries. And as you do, think about where is the fruit of God in your life and in the life of our church. And it's quite a satisfying process. And of course, then you'll have something delicious to take home with you. So the third activity you might want to do is something practical with fruit. So I'm going to make a fruit skewer. So I've got some kiwi, a bit of apricot, one of the blackberries that I picked earlier, and a raspberry, and of course a grape because we've been thinking about the vine today. I'm going to put on another grape and then I'm going to go backwards. So I'm going to do a raspberry, blackberry, apricot, kiwi. And of course, the good thing about this activity is that you get to eat it as well when you have finished. So you might want to enjoy making a fruit skewer and thinking about where the fruit of God is growing in your life. Thank you, Sammy. That is a lovely idea. Do go away from the service and engage in one of those activities as we continue to think about the vine and the branches in the church and how they all relate together. So we're going to finish our service by singing a couple of songs together, not just singing them, but worshipping our Lord Jesus through the singing of them. The first one uh, encourages us to build our lives upon Jesus Christ. Let's stand and sing together. song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever breathe Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you Worthy of every breath 
breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you And holy There is no one like you There is none besides you Open up my eyes in a wonder And show
to do join us on Zoom for a coffee after the service. It would be lovely to catch up with you. The link is on the screen there now. But before that, a final prayer. Father, thank you for the fruit that you produce in us. Continue, we pray, to produce the fruit of love, joy and peace and all the other fruits of the Spirit in us, we pray. And keep us focused on Jesus, the true vine, that our church, that your church may grow and serve your world more and more. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen.